We are going to have some fun today. This is the Woodland Mills WC-68 wood chipper. I'm going to be mating the WC-68 wood chipper to the Kubota B2601 compact tractor. Now I know, I know, if you look at the Woodland Mills specifications, the B2601 barely meets the requirements, but bear with me, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Woodland Mills wood chippers are quick hitch compatible, even with this low-priced Harbor Freight quick hitch. We lost quite a few branches in the storm last night, so I'll set up and we'll talk a little bit more about the WC-68 wood chipper. When you receive your Woodland Mills wood chipper, there's a little bit of initial assembly that you have to do, but not too much. Once you've got that done, each time you use it, it's a pretty easy setup. Um, it's a relatively compact chipper, the way they designed it to kind of fold together. And I'll show you some of those features right now. So the chute, as you see, folds up. We can fold that back, but first you have to move the chute out of the way a little bit. There you go. And that flips down. It's really heavy material. Here's a shot from underneath. So you lock the hopper with two of these latches are very easy to do when you're not holding a camera with one hand. And then there's one on the other side. I've already latched that one. And then we've got this rod, this tie rod here, that is neatly stored away. But you unhook that, and then you connect that down here to the feeder mechanism control. This gives you forward, neutral, and reverse. I'll show you that in just a moment. Really a nice setup. So obviously this is where you feed your branches into the feeder. This is the, I guess it's called the hoppa. We'll call it the hoppa. This is where you feed it. Now, this is where the forward, neutral, and reverse comes in. It's really a brilliant design here. You've got this bar, when you pull it back, that is forward, where it takes the branches into the feeder. You have a neutral position, then you have a reverse position, which is handy if you do get a little bit of a jam, but also, for safety reasons, if you happen to get some clothing stuck on a branch that's pulling you in, you hit this and it stops the machine, and if you hit it hard enough, it'll put it in reverse and back feet. So it's really, really a great design. Everything about this unit is heavy duty. Even the chute for the chips is not just sheet metal. This is heavy gauge steel. What's great about the chute is it rotates 360 degrees. Has a locking pin. Once you find the position you want, you can lock it right in. You can direct the chips to either fan them out or if you're shooting directly into a trailer or a wagon, very handy. You can also play submarine. Captain, prepare for a direct hit. By God, they're headed right toward us. Well, I can't tell if that's a whale or a submarine. Hey, Jim, I think I see your wife. You know, I used to work for a submarine company. Unfortunately, it went under. Hey, speaking of subs, this will be a great time to subscribe to the channel and click that little bell so you're notified each time I put out a video. Also, like the video, share the video, make a comment, all those good things. I really appreciate it. Let's get back to the wood chipper. Oh yeah, remember I was going to talk about why the WC-68 is okay to run on the B2601, even though the B2601 is a little bit undersized according to specs? If you look at the Woodland Mills website, the recommended horsepower for the WC-68 is 20 minimum to 50. The B2601 puts out 
19 horsepower at the PTO. But here's the thing. I don't chip anything bigger than three inches anyway. That's gonna get cut up and burned. And think about this too. Let's use this branch as an example. This branch is only an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. But this would not fit in a two inch hole because of the growth on the sides, the deformity of the branch. So by having the six by eight opening, it allows for deformed branches to be fed through even if they're smaller. So that's why it's okay. And that's why I bought this one. Now you probably want to see this thing work. So the first thing you have to do is lower it. You always want to run your chipper when it's flat on the ground. You don't want to run it when it's raised up on the PTO. So let's lower that. Also remember your safety gear. Safety glasses or goggles. I also recommended ear protection. Even though the chipper is not as loud as you might think, uh, the constant drone of the chipping is not good for your hearing. So I recommend ear protection. I have these 3M uh, workforce or something, uh, but they're uh, Bluetooth. You can listen to music while you're working. I'm not gonna do that now, but anyway, makes a nice makes for nice quietness while you're working. What? What? Check to make sure the hopper's clear. Our chute is pointing this direction because I want you to see the chips coming out. Normally I'd point it in the other direction. I start the chipper at a low RPM and then move it up to the full 540. Also, if you're new to the B2601 or probably other tractors, in order to operate the PTO without sitting on the seat, you need to flip the seat forward. Otherwise, the tractor will stall out. RPM. Using a feed rate of about two and a half is good for this size branch. I know there's an ongoing chainsaw war out there, but I have to say, this is my second Husqvarna. I really like it a lot. It starts every time. Don't let me down. So obviously when you have branches like this, you need to cut them off so they fit through the chipper. So always keep your saw nearby. Hey, let me pause for a minute and tell you a quick story. If you remember a moment ago, I mentioned that this is my second Husqvarna chainsaw. What happened to the first one, Ed, you might ask? Well, let me tell you. When I got this chipper, only about two days in, I'd been using it quite a bit, had piles of branches all over the property and I was having a blast. You know what's coming. So I had to move from one pile to the next, about 500 feet away. And I thought, I'll just set the chainsaw in the hopper. I won't forget it's there. I'm only going 500 feet. So I go the 500 feet, set the chipper in place, set it up, engage the PTO, I hear a strange sound coming from the chipper, one I have not heard before. And then I notice orange chips coming out of the chute. The Husqvarna was no more. Luckily, 
I did place it in the chipper with the handle end first. Handle's made out of plastic, so good reason to have a plastic saw, I guess. Um, I probably could have repaired it. It chewed up the, the saw all the way up to the cylinder head, ate up all the linkage for the throttle, ended up just selling it for parts. Bought another one. This one's actually used. It's just as good as the old one. Actually better. It's a one size bigger. But lesson learned, don't put anything in this hopper except for wood that you intend to chip. No matter how smart you think you are or how good you think your memory is, don't do it. Let me get this out of here before I forget. Like that would ever happen again. Now we're inside the hopper. Of course, everything is turned off. These plastic shields are probably just to keep chips from flying back. But inside there, you can see the wheel that grabs the wood and pulls it in. It pulls it in from the bottom. It has nice sharp teeth. It spins at a variable speed. I'll show you that in just a moment. And it's also on a spring mechanism. So that wheel rides up and down depending on the size of the branch. If you put something small in there, it grabs it right through. If you put a two or three inch branch in there, then that wheel raises up and brings it in. Now here's the variable speed mechanism. This runs off of a hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump runs off of a belt that's hooked to your PTO also. So that runs this hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump runs a hydraulic motor and that runs the feeder wheel that grabs the wood. So you can lock this. You have speeds all the way from one or essentially zero where the wheel doesn't move at all, all the way up to level 10 where the wheel moves very quickly. So if you're just shredding twigs, you know, that are half inch in diameter, you can run this thing full speed. I find that for most things, I run it right around two, two and a half or three. Now, this is one of my complaints about this unit. It's not really a complaint, but what I would like to see would be some sort of feature where the feed rate adjusts automatically based on the wood that you put in there. So if you put a small piece in there, it'll run faster. If you put a bigger piece in, the wheel will slow down. And I actually think there's a way to do that because this mechanism moves up and down, like I was saying from the inside. This moves up and down, which moves the wheel. So I would think there's a way to attach some sort of linkage from this piece to the feeder so that when the wheel is all the way down you'd have a faster feed rate and as the wheel moves up when it senses bigger branches as this moves up so would the speed control because up is actually slower in this case so it could ride with the wheel and be attached to it i think that would be a great upgrade for woodland mills and something that I'd like to try and fabricate at some point myself. Let me show you some of the innards here. So the cover for the flywheel is hinged. I've already loosened this bolt for demonstration purposes. I'll go around and swing it back. The counterweight of the chute makes this really easy to open. So there's the flywheel, three quarter inch steel, 24 inches around, four cutting blades. You can see one of the four cutting blades here, very sharp, they're double sided so that if you get nicks or if it gets dull, you can turn the blade around and get however many more hours out of it. So this is the flywheel, basically, as the blade comes around, it shears the wood like a pair of scissors. There's a stationary blade and a rotating blade. And on this side is where the chips are scooped up and ejected out. This is basically a big fan blade. Again, looks like 3 16ths of an inch steel. Very heavy flywheel. Imagine that spinning at 540 RPMs. That's going to cut through an awful lot. Now I mentioned that I've used this quite a bit. I've run quite a bit of wood through it, all different types. And these blades don't have as much as a nick on them yet. So they're really hardened steel, 
really sharp and hold up really well. You can also buy a kit which includes four replacement blades, a replacement belt, and that may be it. But I actually have that kit so I kind of feel like I'm set for life with this thing. You can see there's a grease fitting on each one of the bearings on each side of the flywheel. So you want to make sure you keep those greased. So why the WC68 instead of the WC46 for the B2601? The WC68 has a 24 inch flywheel made out of 3 quarter inch steel. The WC46 has an 18 inch flywheel also made out of 3 quarter inch steel. There's about a 177 pound difference between the two units. This one is over 800 pounds. Um, again, the B2601 handles it flawlessly. I only stalled the tractor one time and that's because I was not running at full PTO RPM. So from that point forward I run at 540 RPM. It barely chokes whatever you throw at it. So um, it's a great unit. Super heavy duty. Way more heavy duty than I expected. I thought all these parts were going to be sheet metal. They're not. They're strong metal. This, this chute itself is made out of eighth inch steel not sheet metal, uh, the hopper. The chute is made also out of uh, heavy duty, probably eighth inch, 332nd steel. Heavy duty all around, really well made. Love it, love it, love it. And I look forward to using it every time I use it. Gotta say, I was surprised at how big the wood chip piles are from just a few small branches. So you'll have significant piles of chips. Uh, I usually come through with a front end loader and move them, spread them out different places, but I also plan to get a small wagon to pull either with the tractor or with the golf cart, shoot the chips directly into the wagon, and then dump it out in the woods or maybe make some trails or paths with it. But you'll have lots of wood chips. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And click that little bell so you're notified when I make my next video. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great day. Hachi makes lots of cameos on my videos because she's always hanging out with me. Always playing in the background. So, I thought we'll give Hachi just a little bit of screen time. How you doing, Hachi? What'd you find?